In fact, Ernest Holmes wrote, true freedom, true liberty has something cosmic behind it. It's not just a man-made thing. This is something that comes deep through divinity. Freedom to believe what we want is not given through human law, but by universal law. Freedom to speak what we feel is not given to us by a human source or some piece of paper signed by a bunch of men 200 and something years ago, but by the source and substance of all, by that divine presence, that divine intelligence. So to the freedom to choose those words we speak, the thoughts we think, and the beliefs we hold onto, is not because of some legal principle. It is because of our birthright, the birthright of everyone that is given to us by the creative principle that is the universe itself. Freedom from tyranny, freedom from strife, laugh, lack. Not freedom from laughs, we don't want freedom from laughs, but freedom from lack or limitation or ignorance or hate or any sort of junk thinking or old stories that we may have rolling around in our lives that no longer serve us. That is a choice of our minds. That is a choice that is our birthright that cannot be taken away. Viktor Frankl, um, for those who might know, he wrote a vivid account of his experience as a prisoner in a Nazi concentration camp in a book called Man's Search for Meaning. And in it, he wrote this passage, everything can be taken from a man or woman, of course, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, he wrote, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. The first and last human freedom is choice given to us at birth by the divine. The divine gave us that. No one can take that away. No one can even claim to give it. That first and last human freedom is choice. Choice to have independence from the control of others, choice to be independent of the ideas that hurting or taking from others is okay. Independent from the ideas of suffering for something equals a greater worth of that, of that something. Just because you suffer to put into your life um, a good that is in your life doesn't make it any better. There is no need to suffer, to bring forth into your life, to manifest into your life your good, whatever that good looks like, whether it's in your health, in your pocketbook, in your love life or relationships at work or creativity, whatever it is, peace of mind. No suffering has to happen. We are independent from that naturally, and we can choose to continue to be independent from that. Liberty and justice is something handed down from the universe, not by some supreme being that doles out good or bad experiences like a Santa Claus figure, that's not how it works, but by a universal law that reflects back into our lives, into our experiences, that which is equal to the belief of what we have in our, in our subconscious our beliefs, and it's the beliefs of the one and the beliefs of the many that universal law reflects back into our experiences. That is the immutable law of the irrevocable principle of cause and effect. That cannot be revoked. That is the way the universe works. 
and the use of the unifying law that we each individualize is the unifying law that frees us and that we are free to use for our liberty, for our justice, for our health, for our happiness and prosperity. That is possibly the greatest lesson that each of us has to learn or relearn. As Dr. Holmes spoke on this day in 1947 at the Wiltern Theater in Los Angeles, he said, if our nature is one, if God is one, and we know that God must be one for the universe cannot be divided against itself, then we are all tied into an indivisible unity. We are tied into an indivisible unity. He continued with, we shall have to get back to this unity to find the meaning of freedom. Nothing in any part of this cosmic whole could be considered freedom that would destroy the liberty of some other part of it. That would be self-destruction, would it not? I love that. I love that he ends this section of his talk that day, that day with, that would be self-destruction, would it not? considering that freedom destroys liberty. We can't destroy liberty because it is given to us by the universe. It is given to us by the divine, by God. He reminded us on this day, July 4th, in this country of the United States of America, that it is more important we celebrate and honor our being part of the united individuals of the universe. Yes, we honor the idea of, of, the, of the USA and the democratic ideals of this country and other countries similar. But it is more important that we are reminded on this day that we are part of the in, individual united group, the united individuals of the universe an indivisible unity of shared origin, bound by good for good. Bound by good for good. Our pledge is not to a nation, my friends, but to a, a shared energy of origin called by many names. You can call it God, you can call it spirit, you can call it holy one, love, the thing itself. It's that stuff from which our physical bodies were made, which is the same stuff of which the planets were made, of which the minerals were made, the animals were made. Everything in this universe was made. We are united as that, with that. So we declare our independence as a nation, as a people, but most importantly, as e pluribus unum, out of the many, one.
Isn't that so sweet? The little girl at the end saying hello. Um, one of the most fabulous of um, our American composers, Aaron Copeland, with the fanfare for the common man. And I, of course, love that they use that in the Olympics, but um, that that flash mob was uh, presented in the Dublin um, airport, Dublin, Ireland, where so much um, violence and uh, work for liberty has ensued and continues in their independence. And it just represents what we commonly as humankind um, are working for. And that is not only the independence as nations and as a peoples, but our independence and our freedom that is our birthright. Love that. So as is my tradition on the 4th of July or the Sunday closest to the 4th of July, I want to give you what I call the New Thought Declaration of Independence. It is a piece I wrote um, several years ago in honor of um, this holiday um, and in honor of the humanity that was created out of the American or what became the American Declaration of Independence. Because like I've been speaking about all morning, this declaration is not just for Americans. It is for all of us, all over the world, all over the universe, declaring our independence. So here it is, the New Thought Declaration of Independence to codify and declare our freedom our independence with liberty and justice for all. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one person to dissolve the hands, the bonds and bands of struggle, strife, lack and faithlessness, which has connected them with a life that does not serve their greatest good. And to assume among the power of the universe, the station of prosperity to which the laws of nature entitle them. A decent respect to the opinion of one who speaks in truth requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to this separation. I hold this truth to be self-evident that I am created equal, that I am endowed by my creator, that which is within me, with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and happiness. To secure these rights in my life, beliefs shall be instituted by me, deriving their just powers from divine consent of the great intelligence, my mind, and the law of cause and effect. Whenever any form of my beliefs become destructive of these ends, it is the right of me to alter or to abolish it and to institute new thoughts new feelings, new perspectives, 
laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its power in such form as to most likely affect my safety, prosperity, health, and happiness. Prudence, indeed, dictates that beliefs long established should not be changed for light and transient causes, and accordingly, all experience has shown that many times I am more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right myself by abolishing the beliefs to which I am accustomed that brought on the suffering. When a long train of abuses and usurpations of my good reveals a design to reduce me to absolute or partial lack, it is my right, it is my duty to throw off such beliefs and to provide new thoughts and feelings, new perspectives and beliefs for my future security, prosperity, health, and happiness. Such has been my patient sufferance, and such is now the necessity which constrains me to alter my thinking and my beliefs from the history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having a part of the establishment an absolute tyranny over my happiness. And so, I now declare with full knowledge and embodying of the one power within, that one indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause, with that spirit expressing through me, which is the unity of all life, I claim and swear to use my creative thoughts to think from that eternal goodness, that eternal loving kindness, and that eternal givingness of divine intelligence. To act, be, and surround myself with love, abundance, vitality, and vibrancy. To think, reason, and live without the bondage of any negativity from my past. And so too, without the consciousness of no, or the shoulda, woulda, coulda of not yet, without fear of the future I will create, and without any water cooler gossip or the news and opinions of CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, NPR, or any government or religion that may be running around in my mind like a rat in a cage, like squirrels in a whirling dervish, like chattering monkeys invading my consciousness. I therefore do, in the name and by the authority of my birthright as an individualization of the source and substance of all, solemnly publish and declare that I am that I am, and of right ought to be free and independent of destructive thoughts and beliefs, and that I am that I am is absolved from all allegiance to negativity, and that all connection between me and the state of lack and limitation is and ought to be totally dissolved. And that is a free and independent personalization of God. I engage my full power to levy peace, to levy prosperity, and to levy love into my life from this day forward. And for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection and power of the divine intelligence within, let us all declare and pledge to our lives. 
and our sacred honor, this Declaration of Independence. And if you would, as I do when I do this live, if you would take your finger and just sign your name into the air, put a little flourish. <laughs> you have now declared your independence from lack, from strife, from limitation, from anything, from any idea, anyone that makes you feel like you have no freedom, that makes you feel like you are not independent, that makes you feel like you do not have liberty of choice, for no one and nothing can take that away except you. And when you vibrate at the speed of the divine, when you allow yourself to reveal that the divinity that is within you, when you take action, not only through your imagination and feelings, but through your body, when you walk that talk, as they say, you bust through, soar, and zoom to your greatest good, whatever that looks like. That is what this day is about. That is what this holiday reminds us of not only here in the United States, but all over the world, all over the universe. So now I'd like you to join me in our affirmative incantation for the week. And let us know this together. And Steve's gonna pop up the, the aff affirmative affirmation for the week and you can read it with me or you can just close your eyes as if you are in meditation or prayer and listen and know these words that I ask you to read or to yourself or aloud every morning and every evening before you go to sleep this entire week. Knowing this, freedom is not a question. Freedom is an answer. I answer, why can I have prosperity in my life? With, because I am free. I answer, why will I have vitality and vibrancy in my body? With, because I am unbound. I answer, why will I have love kindness and respect in my life with because I have freedom. I have the freedom to choose my thoughts, choose my beliefs, and choose my actions. And today I choose to have the feelings and imagination to support my prosperity, health, and love with powerful full-bodied, full-hearted, clear, and fearless actions. Oh, say I can see by the dawn's early light. My gifts and talents manifesting into fabulous experiences. Breathe that into your body, into your mind, into your beliefs, into your subconscious here and now. And let it out. And we let it out knowing that as we release it, it not only embodies our mind and this physical being that we are in at this time, but it embodies our life surrounding us and the lives of others. We share this knowing, we share this knowledge, we share this belief with gratitude and appreciation. We know together. We live together in peace, love, joy, liberty, justice, all of us. As together we say, and so it is. Namaste.